In today's video, I'm going to cover everything that you need to get set up to stream your indoor rides online. I'm going to cover the hardware you need, the software and configuration, lots of tips along the way, and at the end, we'll hit go live to show you what it's all about from the broadcasting side and the viewing side. In recent weeks, we've seen a lot more people streaming their indoor rides online, most likely because we're limited in our outdoor endeavors. Now, online streaming isn't just the realm of the kids and Gen X, and some people will say, who wants to see someone suffering indoors alone? And sure, it'd be kind of strange if that's all it was, but online streaming can be much more than that. People are now streaming their rides, their races, their workouts, or as what I use it for, which is a Q&A with all the viewers to make the time go a lot faster when I'm riding indoors. If you're watching this video, it's highly likely you already have the hardware required to get up and running for online streaming. And today, I'm gonna to take you through a basic version of what I use in the Llama Lab. Okay, so here we are with everything that you'll need to get up and running for online streaming. First of all, your internet uplink needs to be at least five megabits per second or greater. Now that is uplink this way, not download in this direction. Your uplink speed can be easily checked by a service such as speedtest.net. I'll go through my results right now. Loading up speedtest.net on the web here and hitting go, you can see here my downlink is about 93 megabits per second, 94. And the uplink, the one we really wanna know about, is pushing near 35, 36 megabits per second, which is brilliant for online streaming. So a big green tick there for my internet connection here with that massive uplink, well over five megabits per second. Now, next thing you'll need down here is a PC or a Mac. With everything that's involved in encoding and capturing and all that, it's not quite possible to do this kind of setup with a mobile device. So you will need a later model Mac or PC. And on that Mac or PC, you'll need to run some studio software. The software that I run is open source and free and also cross-platform, runs on Mac, PC or Linux, and that's OBS Studio. And that will allow us to capture, encode, manage, and upload everything that takes place here in your cycling studio. OBS Studio, you can think of as your production studio. There's a lot to it, which we'll go through the configuration with after this. Connected to that Mac or PC, you'll need a camera on yourself. I've chosen to go with just a basic USB webcam. You can see they're sitting up on top of the screen. USB webcams are quite cheap, and they're also very handy to move around. If you have a laptop and you're doing this, sometimes you're limited on the angles that you can get. So a USB webcam, quite cheap, works quite well, but the quality of those cameras aren't really that great in low light, which leads me to lighting. You need to be front lit, you are the subject, and you need to have a ton of light blasting on you for that webcam to really pop you out of the scene. For lighting, you can pretty much use anything. Now, I use cheap light boxes off eBay, but a desk lamp, a directional lamp, anything works well, as long as it's pointed at you. Another critical component to this hardware setup is good audio, and that comes in the form of having a very good quality microphone. I'm using a condenser mic here, which is the Blue Yeti USB microphone. I haven't skimped out on this at all. And the reason being, it's a directional mic. We can apply a really good filter to it, so you pretty much can't hear the fans, you can't hear the trainer, but you can hear me speaking. Optionally, you can use any microphone that you can find, but you might struggle to get that audio quality to where it needs to be. And finally, on the hardware side of things, you see it over there, it's the green screen. Now, I have included this on the basic setup. I debated whether I should or shouldn't include it, but I think it really lifts the standard of everybody's streams, and it's really easy to configure within the OBS software. You can embed yourself in the stream, which makes it look so much better than being in a little square box. And the final component, once everything is set up and configured, is to choose a streaming service to go for. So, for example, today we're running through the Twitch setup, but you could alternatively use YouTube, Facebook, or Mixer. Okay, so there's our overview of the hardware and the software we need. Now we're gonna jump over to the Llama Lab and get it all configured and we're gonna go live. Okay, now onto the software configuration and going live over on Twitch. First of all, I have my Windows 10 machine here with the webcam and microphone already installed. I have Zwift installed. That's the software that I'll be streaming today. But you could very well use any software you like, but what you will need is OBS Studio for that. So over on obsproject.com slash download, we go and grab the downloader and we run through the setup wizard. So 70 megabytes, download, get rid of that for now. And the latest update came out just the other day, 25.0.4. Okay, user agreement, default install location. Okay, and we'll launch that straight away. 
Okay, asks to go through a setup wizard. Now it's already detected the microphone, you can see there, but we will go through the setup wizard, so yes we will. Optimize for streaming or recording, this can do both. We want streaming for today. The current resolution of this computer that I'm on is 1080, so that's what the resolution we're going to use. Either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible. Absolutely, 60 looks nice and smooth for online gaming. The service we'll be using, which is Twitch. Now we can use a stream key. The easiest way to get Twitch set up for this though is just simply to connect to your account. So we'll hit that. I already have a Twitch account, so you'll need one of these set up. Okay, that'll give us a confirmation code that we need to enter in here. That'll be to our email address that we've signed up to Twitch with. Once entered, that will authenticate the account. Prefer hardware encoding? Yes, I'm going to use that for my NVIDIA hardware that I have on this machine. Estimate bitrate and bandwidth? Yes, that may take a few minutes. That's always advisable, even though we've already done the bandwidth test. So we'll let this do its thing for now. Okay, and there are most of the configuration settings that we need without having to touch them at all. So service Twitch, server, auto, recommended. It'll find the closest server, which is possibly Sydney for me. The video bitrate looks good to me. Streaming encoder hardware, recording encoder hardware, high quality, medium file size. It's in 1080 in 60 frames a second. That all looks pretty good. So once we hit OK on that, it's gonna load up our Twitch chat and Twitch stream information. And we are almost good to start. One thing I will though is change back to the non-dark theme. I don't actually like that dark theme. I'm used to playing with this in uh, the bright settings here. So as it stands right now, we have OBS ready to go. It's connected to my Twitch account, but we have no sources on this single scene. You can have multiple scenes to change the views. We will go through that in a more advanced streaming video in the future. But for now, one single scene, but we need some sources here. This is where we pull in our webcam, our games, and everything that you see on screen. Now for ease of use here, I don't go full screen on Zwift. It's in windowed mode. I only have one screen on this machine. It's always advisable to have more than one screen to manage a stream and the games all at once. It can get a little complex, but again today, just for the basics, we'll do it all on the one machine on the one screen. I'm going to resize this window and you'll see why in a moment. Just watch. Alrighty, here we are. Now to leave a certain level of detail on the screen, we need that to be quite large. But as you can see that it's hidden our OBS, so we really can't get to it and see what's going on. Okay, with that now on screen and not full screen, we'll switch back to OBS and we'll add Zwift as the background window capture source. So we'll call this one Zwift. And there we go. It's found that by default, Zwift. Capture method, automatic is fine. Match title, capture cursor, that looks good to me. So that's done. Hasn't taken up the full screen. We can go transform and stretch to screen. That stretches to our base layer there. I am going to minimize Zwift in the background, which will lock this, just to save on some system resources for now. So we have our background base there, the source of Zwift, and we lock that, so we don't need to modify that whatsoever. You can turn that on and off by clicking that little icon there. Next up, we need the webcam. So that comes in as a video capture device. We're gonna call this one webcam. Okay, on this, Logitech Brio. And there we are. Okay, we do need to configure some settings here to make it look a little better than what you're seeing right now. So we'll go to custom, we'll drop the resolution. It is a 4K camera, so we're gonna drop that back to only 1080, that's all we need for that. Everything else looks pretty good for now, so we'll leave that in place. But here's me and the uh, very messy Llama Lab. Right, holding the Alt key, we can drag that in and crop the sides. Drag that side in as well. And letting go of the Alt key on the keyboard, we can move the screen. Now with no other keys pressed on the keyboard, we can rescale me. So I'm gonna drop that down below the keyboard so you can't see the keyboard there. Push that off to the side, we go about there, and bang, we are there. However, it doesn't look quite right. 
uh, we have the green screen in the background, very well lit with the lighting that I have on me and also a light on the green screen. So to make that green screen disappear, we need to add a chroma key or a filter on that. Let's right click, filters, effect filter, plus, very easy to do this. We're gonna add a chroma key, that's all we need. Bang, it's gone in that, and the defaults are usually good enough. There we go, we are done. It's as easy as that to add the green screen and then remove it behind, so we are now in game. It looks a billion times better. So again, with and without the chroma key on, we can switch that on or off. And they're the edges as well, so if you're reaching too far out, you're gonna lose your hand. The bigger the green screen, the better, but you can work within that. If you're on a bike here, your handlebars are only going that far. So chroma key on, and we're done. It really is that easy. Okay, and we're gonna lock that down too, just so we don't accidentally mouse that at all. So that's pretty much it, but we do need to add good audio. So for that, we're gonna make sure the auxiliary mic is set to the Yeti. Properties of that, down to the Yeti microphone here, done, done, and we are good. Now desktop audio is taking audio in from Zwift, that's the desktop audio that you hear. Uh, it's currently frozen because it's minimized. Uh, webcam audio, a lot of webcams do have audio as well, we wanna block that out, we don't want any double audio coming through from the webcam. So we're almost there, we have Zwift in the background, currently paused as we configure everything. We have me with the webcam, the lighting, we have the audio set up. Last thing I'm gonna do is add a audio filter on top of the microphone here, just to take out some wind noise or the trainer noise. And again, that is really easy to do. We find the microphone, so the mic auxiliary just here. We go filters, we add a basic noise suppression. We drop that back to about negative 10 on this microphone. If it's too high, you'll get that really wishy-washy underwater sound. But negative 10 dB on this particular microphone, the Blue Yeti, works brilliantly. Really takes out the sound of the trainer and any air floating around or moving around in this room. And there's gonna be quite a bit in a trainer room. And we are done. Okay, that's pretty much it. So one final check we'll do before going live over on Twitch is to check the sound levels or the audio levels with Zwift, the in-game noise that we're hearing, and also the microphone. And to do that, we'll pull Zwift up again, unminimized. We'll jump to, say, camera TV mode here. Jump back to Zwift. You can see everything's now started up again. It's now in the well, unminimized state. We have the desktop audio bouncing around. We have the mic and auxiliary not going too far into the red and we have the webcam disabled. Okay, that's good. So from here, just below start streaming is start recording. So we'll hit start recording there. Okay, this is testing our audio levels with Zwift in the background and me using the microphone, the Blue Yeti, for my voiceovers. Let's see how this video looks. Okay, we hit stop on that. And we'll minimize Zwift again just to pause all that up. And we can jump over to the final system under videos. And there's our recording just there. So we'll hit play on that. So we'll hit start recording there. Okay, this is testing our audio levels with Zwift in the background and me using the microphone, the Blue Yeti, for my voiceovers. Let's see how this video looks. That sounds okay to me as our initial test. You can log in once you do go live with your mobile phone or another computer and just check those sound levels. Once you've got them nailed, that's what you can always use. Alrighty, I think we're ready to go. That looks good to me. We'll get Zwift in the foreground again. We'll go Bateman, we'll just commentate on Bateman's ride, okay. Title information here now, we're just about to go live with all this configuration because everything looks good. So the title of this video will be Twitch Live Test GP Llama. We hit update information on that and we hit start streaming, three, two, one. We are on with the live stream. You can see the green light down below there within OBS. That indicates we are recording. And that's about it. We are simply live. All we need to do now is wait for people to come on board and maybe have a chat to us to let us know this stream is working okay. So we'll give it a minute or two. We'll see if anybody jumps on board. While we're here, we can pull up another toolbar and show the amount of people watching. Now that's under docs. Twitch stats, we have zero viewers at the moment, but it does indicate that we are live. As soon as we have a viewer, it's the middle of the day here in Australia, which is the middle of the night everywhere else, so probably not a lot of viewers are gonna be on board. But that is it. We are live streaming with the configuration we did in just a few minutes. 
It's all about having the correct lighting, the correct audio, and that decent uplink to be able to broadcast this in full 1080. Okay, we currently have six viewers online. Okay, thanks everybody. <laughs> I was a bit worried there that nobody was viewing my live test stream, but here we go, live right now, recording this one for YouTube. Brand new setup. This is the Alpha R2 Windows 10 machine. Uh, I think the audio levels are good. And as you can see here, this is what the experience is about. So if I was to be on my bike here, I'll be zwifting along, looking at this screen right here. We'll have the chat over that side. We'll have the stream information sitting there over on the, uh, the bottom left. So we have six viewers. We've been streaming for two minutes and everything looks a little a little good, I have to say that. Using live, I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, another couple of tips for live streams is if somebody asks a question, if you can repeat the question and then answer the question, that'll really help out for other people watching and not uh, looking at the chat. So another hot tip there. Okay, in chat, give us a g'day uh, because we are recording this one for YouTube on my how-to video for OBS, streaming Zwift and going live. How does it look? Give me a, give me a rating out of 10 for the audio. Everything looks good. Oh, we've got a hi mom, hi <laughs> YouTube. All looks good. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. That's all I need to run through for today, going live here. I do appreciate everybody jumping in the chat and being a part of that. Look for this video hopefully soon over on YouTube where I go through the rundown of the hardware required to get all this set up, the configuration, which is the download of OBS Fresh, the basic configuration for a single scene and going live like this, it's all too easy. Okay, now I've hit stop on that. If you had multiple scenes, you can sit a, an end screen on there and plus an intro screen. We'll go into that later on. But there it is. Uh, and we've still got 10 out of 10s rolling in. Happy days. And that was with a brand new vanilla setup with the right hardware. All right, I think we're done. Time to wrap this one up. Okay, there we are. Everything that you need to get up and running for a basic stream that looks really, really good online. I'll link below to all of the configuration that I use for my advanced setups, which I'll go through in detail in further videos. If you have any further questions, let us know below in the video comments. And feel free to get creative with anything we've set up today. The sky is a limit and people are doing some really, really interesting things with their own streams. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated. We'll see you out there on the live stream.